expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm using my faith, and I'm expecting great
is your right now faith. Faith is for right now, right here, right now, in the moment. Use your right now faith. That's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is now. Faith is. Faith is right now. Right now. Use your right now faith. Faith is right now. Come on, believe it. Right now. You can make that choice. This is the most important choice you will ever make. To have faith in God. You know what? Every man is a liar. <laughs> Every man. But God is true. God's word is true. So put your faith not in man, but in the Lord. Put your faith in the Lord right now. It's right now. It's for right now, not for later. Okay? It's for right now. Use your right now faith. Okay? Hallelujah. Faith is now. Faith is. Yes. Now faith is for right now. Hallelujah. And believe. Oh, that's awesome, Veronica. Receive what you are believing for. God is a great, great God. And he's still doing great things. Hallelujah. And if we don't use God like some kind of um, gambling device, you know, we don't, we don't, but you know what? We lean on him. We lean on him. We trust him. Jesus, that he's going to come through on our behalf. That's what faith is. Faith is believing the things that you can't see. Faith is believing the things that you can't even believe can be possible. But all things are possible to them that believe. If you believe, all things are possible. If that's you today and your, and your faith is being shattered and it's being weakened, it's being destroyed. I promise you, we come to encourage you today. We come to give you new birth and new life in Jesus Christ. It can only happen through Him. His peace. His understanding. That's all you need. Trust me. These things of the world, all the world is going to pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. Yes. But the only thing that's going to remain is God's Word. Yes. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you today. Well, welcome, Bless guys. You. Welcome. We are Higher Place Church. Oh, wow. Whoa. Wow. I'm going to rock and roll. What you do? Yes. In case you don't know, uh, I'm Veronica, this is my husband Angelo, and this is our home. So welcome to our home on this Sunday afternoon. Um, we're excited about this. Um, actually, I wasn't very excited, but then I started looking back in my notes, and then I was excited again. <laughs> Not everybody agrees with this, and that's okay, because... Um, to be a part of this ministry and to be a part of Higher Place Church, you do not have to agree with everything that we say. But the only thing that we do say you need to agree with is God God's and word. God's word. So that is and, good enough for us. And I want to challenge you. You know, <laughs> anything we say, anything that we share with you, research it for yourself. Yes, Go into yes. the word of the, of the Lord. Open it up and say, well, wait a minute. What is the scripture? They said the scripture says this. You know, you know what? Sometimes when you read the word, sometimes you don't read the same word twice in, in your lifetime. And all of a sudden you run across the scripture and you go, oh my goodness. And God will reveal something to you that you never saw before. So that's why we challenge you to go in the word for yeah. yourself. Because that will excite you, encourage you. To get deeper into a deeper relation and a deep, deeper understanding of the Word of God, yes. and we're here to, to together as husband and wife in one unity to, to yes. share with you Amen. today. You know, and I'm going to share with my brothers and sisters because we, you know, this world will tell you everything it can to divide you because it's done yeah. every yeah. this music industry and this ministries that we've been involved with. It's all about tearing down marriage. In the unity that Christ yeah. joined together. The Bible says, let no one separate what I've joined together, what Jesus has joined together. So that may be, you know what, through your marriage, may through your relationships, your friendships, even through uh, skin color. And I promise you that's a lie from the devil. Don't buy into the lie. We need each other. You know, I wish these candidates would talk about how we need each other. We do. We need yeah. 
right. Everybody needs to come right. to we need to be the women. United, United but, but we're not the United not the States. United not the States. That's good. <laughs> You know, in, right, right. Instead of being a, you know, instead of being a relationship, a lot of people in lustful ship. So anyway, I had to get that out. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, but but I promise you that God never intended us to be divided and right. divisive yes. toward one another, yes. especially those who call themselves a brother. If you're a brother of mine, your skin color means nothing. It doesn't mean anything. It really, you know, we need to let each other, encourage each other, that our cultures don't matter. See, the Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free, right? So, if you are struggling with slavery, and you always talk about slavery, and you're always in the past, but the Bible says, forget those things that lie behind, step into the future, step in, press toward the mark. In other words, don't live back there. Don't concentrate on what happened to your people, what happened to your culture. If you live there, then you're really not receiving the word of the Lord because the word of the Lord says, who the sun sets free is free. Lincoln didn't free the slaves. Jesus freed free the slaves, period. It wasn't a man, okay? And what happens is the devil uses all this divisiveness. Yes. To remind us and, of history. Yes, and that's actually, um, we went through several points last My week. God. And you guys, and just for your information, uh, you guys can go back to part one. And it's actually on YouTube right now. So you guys want to see part one. Um, As a matter of fact, on our YouTube channel. This nation, Veronica. This, this message you have today, what it reminded me of is that we're all slaves. Yes. I mean, if you really you know, yeah, if we're so yeah. focused in on politics yeah. and we're focused in on this yeah. nation and we're focused in that's, on that's the point, right? That that's is the it. right. That's it. And you know what? That's the point. I choose Jesus. The only way out <clears throat> is through the truth of God's word. Period. The truth makes you free. Because you, you, you know what? Because you know what the Bible says? It's impossible for God to. That's Lie. right. That's one of the things that it is impossible for God to do. That's right. Yes. To me, that's a promise. That's right. That's a promise that He that's keeps. Right. So, in other words, who can you even in this earth say that they don't they don't lie? Oh, it says he's a little fib. Well, what's a fib? Even I've said many great, of them. even my, the great Jerry. My mother used to, <laughs> the great liar, Jerry. liar. Yeah. But yeah. but but even my mother great Jerry. Yeah, even the great. Yeah. No, but I I'm, have to lie. I'm a lawyer. A liar. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And if you, and you know, we're not, we're not we're not putting all the lawyers in the bucket and yeah. saying you're all liars, but majority of them are. And that's what you get paid for. And I'm sure they, and wait, well, in Harvard Law, I bet you they have like a lying class. Uh, <laughs> that's called skull and bones. Ooh, yeah, that's the lying skull class. Bones in Yale. Oh, I'm sorry. Was it? Well, you know the other ones. Anyway. We want to coach you. <laughs> yeah. We're and guys, you know what? I, I want people, because not only does truth make you free, mm. but tr what truth has done for me is it has empowered me. So I don't want these messages to be discouraging. Mm. I don't want them to be, uh, um, I, I want them to empower you all. That's right. And, and I'm going to explain that further. I just want to go over the points very quickly and go to, um, number six, which was our last point, very quickly, why we have decided not to vote in the election. And number one, presidents are selected, mm -hmm. not elected. That was Franklin D. Roosevelt. In politics, nothing happens by accident. If it happens, you can bet it was planned that way. Number two, all presidents are related. Okay, and you guys can do that research. Go to um, Burke's Peerage uh, website. Um, number three, presidents are bought. Okay, they are bought. Uh, number four, voting is rigged. Okay, <laughs> again, you can go back, uh, you can go to YouTube and see the part one. Okay, and people are, a lot of people are talking about that now. Uh, number five, illusion of choice. Okay, and number six, and it's just what you actually started talking about, um, divide and conquer mm -hmm. tactic. Mm -hmm. 
divide and conquer tactic. And I just want to uh, read a couple quotes that, ooh, my hair's all over the place. Okay, um, this is Mayor Amschel Rothschild, and he's the founder of the House of Rothschild. And they are um, is that Disney World? supposedly, what? House of Rothschild, where is that? House of Rothschild. Mm -hmm. um, they are supposedly the wealthiest family in the world. And this is a quote by him. This is, uh, he said this in 1744, or around seven, 17, well, between 1744 and 1812, because that's when he lived. He said, let me issue and control a nation's money, and I care not who writes the laws. Wow. Okay, so money makers rule over lawmakers, okay? And that's why we, we spoke about that last week, how presidents are bought. This was a quote by the wealthiest, one of the wealthiest families in the world, the Rothschilds, okay? Oh, yeah, I just want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Does anybody out there, you can do your little things if you do on Periscope, does anybody out there believe that money doesn't rule the world? This world. Is money the root of this they have world? That, isn't there a song, Money Makes the World Go Round? Right. Isn't there a song? Right. Like that, money world. Makes the World Go Round. And that's mm -hmm. what this is based on. And I'm talking about cash this. money. Yeah. 50 yep. cent. Yep. And he's saying, you know what? I don't care who makes the laws. I don't care who writes the laws. Right. I got more money than them. Well, and no, no, what no, I say no, so, goes. No, so what, I mean, that clarifies the whole issue. Yeah. Because if money is the root of all evil, right? And money it's rules. Love of money. Right, the love of money is love the root of, of money. Is but what I'm saying is if, if, if money controls the whole world, mm -hmm. then it's like it's like you hear these candidates that talk about money, money. Oh, I didn't, I didn't pay any money to. Wait a minute. You've been. How, how many, you know how you know much it costs to do a commercial on TV? That's right. Millions. Yeah, yeah. They don't do right. it for free. You, the average person, you, the average voter out there, do you have enough money to do it, uh, an ad on television to give your point of view? No, right. you don't. Yeah. You, you don't. You don't possess that kind of cash. You just gotta go on and the only cash, you know, <laughs> Twitter or Facebook. Right. Well, the only way you can get that kind of cash is with the Rothschilds. You know, the yeah. people who lead the one world government. Yeah. Yes. You, right. right. That want the uh, new world order. Right. That's one world. They're the ones that have all the money. Yeah. See, it's not. We shouldn't be fighting each other. We should be. We should be going after them. Yeah. Yeah, excuse me. In other words, there should be big, like exactly. millions of people jumping on their buildings. Exactly. And right. Exactly. But instead, they want to protest. They go are, over to see the Rothschilds. Their their con con, um, sorry, their uh, tactic is divide and conquer. So they're making us fight one another no. to take what the attention no, no, off no. of them. Honey, I'll make it plain for you. We are the slaves to them. Yes. Yeah. That's the reality, people. And you know that's what? That's what they think. I don't care if you're black, white, green, or blue. When it comes to green, okay, yeah. that makes you, if the one who possesses it hoards over you, okay, when the, when, when the, when the, the, the one who lords the, the money over you, over you yeah. is the one who's, who's putting you into slavery. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, and you know what? I'm going to confirm what Angelo just said. Um, Despite warnings, Woodrow Wilson signed the 1913 Federal Reserve Act. A few years later, he wrote, I am a most unhappy man. I have unwittingly ruined my country, talking about the United States. A great industrial nation is controlled by its system of credit. Our system, our system of credit is concentrated. The growth of the nation, therefore, and all our activities are in the hands of a few men. Wow. We have come to be one of the worst ruled, mm -hmm. one of the most completely controlled and dominated governments in the civilized world, no longer a government by free opinion, no longer a government by conviction and the vote of the majority, but a government by the opinion and duress of a small group of dominant men. This is what right. Woodrow Wilson said. The, the first thing was about the free was that? Freemason? Oh, Rothschild? Right. Yeah. Freemason. Okay, Freemasonry. Yeah. yeah. Christians. So here you know, you I just want to check. Christians, if you're a believer out there, 
I don't care what you are, black, white, green, doesn't matter about your culture. Don't be a cultural Christian, first of all. Don't put your culture before Christ. When we do that, yeah. we're in danger of not obeying God and His Word. That's what this election because, is doing. No, no, hold on. But how can you hate your brother, <sighs> yet, yeah. yet say, oh, I love you, Lord. You're a liar. Yeah. That's right. That's it. You know what? That's the bottom line. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like what I said. But like Paul said, am I now your enemy because I tell you the truth? Galatians 4.16. So today, we're going to challenge you on your faith. We're going to challenge you as a believer. You know what? Believers need to step up. They need to do their homework. They need to be vigilant. You know, we're going to give, we're going to give a message in, in December to some church leaders. And you know, we're going to encourage them. First, we're going to ask them, are you saved? Are you a Christian? Second of all, I want to say, do your homework. Yes. Research, man. Right. You know, I had a guy laugh at me. Go, oh, you guys are crazy. Oh, you're, you're nuts. Really? Okay. <laughs> no, no. We have information. Information doesn't make you crazy. It makes you astute. It makes you alert. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. It, it, yes. it, it transforms right. your thinking. Yeah. See, if you're not thinking, I saw a bumper sticker and it said, Thinking is still not illegal. It's good bumper sticker. Yeah, that's good. Because to me, we need to yeah. think, believers. That's we right. need to renew our minds so that we can get this information that Veronica is yeah. sharing with yeah. you. Yeah. And go for it yourself. That's right. Are they not? If we're nuts, go look it up for yourself. Yes, yes. Research, guys. Research that's right. everything that everything. you're saying. Please, please. Um, WikiLeaks. Uh, it's called WikiLeaks, and they are uh, they publish documents of political or historical importance yep. that are censored or otherwise suppressed. So supposedly this is what WikiLeaks is. Now they tweeted this on October twentieth. Okay, and this is I don't know who said this. I think um, it, I don't know. I don't know if it's just anonymous people or just from WikiLeaks itself, but. The quote said, there is no U.S. election. There is power consolidation, rigged primary, rigged media, and rigged Pied Piper candidate drive consolidation. Wow. You know, and if we um, go back to the definition of politics in 2016, as opposed to 1828, remember we read that uh, in the first part? then that would make sense that this is all a um, struggle. This is all a power struggle. This is all a fight for power. Now, um, I want to talk quickly about something called controlled opposition, which I had never heard of before. Mm -hmm. um, but this makes a lot of sense to me, and that's why I want to mention this to you all. Um, it's called controlled opposition, and this is basically what it means. Um, nearly all governments in history have employed this technique to trick, co-opt, and subdue their adversaries. Mm -hmm. Remember the old good cop, bad cop? Yep. It appears they oppose each other, but secretly they are working toward the same goals. Guys, please hear me on this. The illusion that Fox News, for instance, <laughs> is fair and balanced compared and, to other and, networks, and not yeah. is a classic controlled opposition, okay? So they are an, an example of controlled opposition. They're allowed to be derogatory right. and critical, but boundaries are set, giving the illusion of counterbalance, okay? The political arena is the most blatant forum for effective controlled opposition and deception. Not only do you have opposing political analysts having a fake face-off, but the U.S. two-party system is a glaring example of controlled opposition. As two mono, monolithic parties slug it out in front of the media, they have known all along that they are on the same team. Two, opposed, quote-unquote opposed political parties, both pursuing the same overall agenda is certainly not a democratic concept nor beneficial to citizenry. Um, the only beneficiaries of the perpetual agenda are the elite. 
Okay, people who we just quoted uh, by Ro uh, Rothschild, Rothschild right. um, who derive massive financial gains at the expense <laughs> of the American taxpayer. Yep. Guys, I hope somebody is hearing this. It's real stuff. Okay. Man. I mean, <clears throat> this makes so much sense. You know, your Fifth Amendment right was was being violated last week when you weren't able to put our message up on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, oh, my gosh, they're censoring us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to ask you a question. And Robert. we already have a lot of views on that, on that YouTube video. Yeah, can I ask you know a question? There are some who are going to want to listen. Can I ask you a question? Where's democracy in the Bible? Where's I still Char can't find it. Where's charisma in the Bible? <laughs> I mean, if we're, we're going to start yeah. using words, yeah, yeah. we better make sure that they're in God's word. That's right. Because otherwise, with God's word, don't otherwise it's your opinion, by, man. Don't just go by what you hear in church. That's so true, and it doesn't matter if you've been hearing it for years and years and years, generations upon generations. Doesn't matter if it's a tradition in your church or not. Check it with God's word. You know, I was, I was watching Paris, but I happened to run across this Brian Kahn again. This fake. Phony prophet, self-proclaimed prophet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm a prophet. You no, know, you're a P-R-O-F-I-T. You know what? You can call me. I'm Angela. You can call me anytime, and, you, and I can get you saved. Okay, because you need to repent. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. you're stealing God's people's right. money. You're, you're stealing God's God's money. You're you're robbing God's people, not only of their money, but you're robbing them of their souls. Okay, by by lying and, 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 and deceiving them into thinking into your thinking. And you know what, Christians, we need to wake up from the foolishness. Stop supporting this yeah. kind of foolishness. You don't have anything better to do on Saturday night? Well, you know what, get together with your family and pray. Go out to dinner and pray. Go, go do something. Yet don't go to these churches where they're going to just take your money and, and lie to you and, and, and just lead you down a path of destruction mm -hmm. and then talk about politics and using all their, all their agenda mm -hmm. about politics. I'm not going to mention who he's voting for. It yeah. doesn't yeah. matter. Because, yeah. you know, but what, what right. I'm just talking about my brothers and my sisters. I'm tired of you getting robbed. Yes. Man, Amen. you know what? It's like... Amen. Because we know what it's like to be robbed. Trust me. Okay? We, we, we may be white, but we know what it's like to be robbed. Okay? And you don't have to be a color to be robbed. Mm -hmm. You could be robbed. It doesn't matter. The devil doesn't. Okay. The Bible says the devil's come to steal, kill, and destroy. That's right. He don't care about your black skin or your white skin or your yellow skin or your red skin or your brown skin. He don't care. Yeah. No lives matter to Satan. So, so when we have these these self-proclaimed prophets or these people in the church lying to God's people, because oh, I gotta hear a word from the Lord. You want to hear, hear a word from the Lord? Open up your Bible, and God will speak to that's you. That's right. Amen. And you don't need Amen. no imposters. That's right. That's right. Right. I mean, and Jesus told, told, warned us as his disciples that there would be wolves in sheep's Hello? clothing, and that we would know them by their fruits. And what I, I find very interesting, again, it just disturbs me on every level. Mm -hmm. I see women packing these auditoriums. Mm -hmm. There's maybe 10 men in the whole building, you know, one being the false prophet, yeah. and the other one being all women. Yeah. Now, what are you there for? Yeah. Wow. You think you're going to go home with him or something? I mean, you, it's, not a night, it's not a nightclub. But that's what they, yeah. you know what? We yeah. can make faces. We yeah. can, no. You know, we're here to tell you the truth. Yeah, that's right. You know what? You should know the truth. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know the yeah. truth, you ain't free. That's right. That's the bottom line. Yeah. yeah, that's right. People deserve to know the truth. All right, I um, want to go to another point, and we're talking about this divide and conquer mm. tactic. Mm. Um, there is this thing called order out of chaos, chaos, which happens to be the motto for Freemasonry. Again, in order for you to I understand agree. the way this world works and even the political system, you need to study and research Freemasonry. But it's not free. I said that last uh, in part one as well. See, but not, nothing you know, of the masonry is free. Yes, none of, right, none, what a lie. none of it is free, exactly. Now, I can, I can prove this to you all. Um, and 
it, the, the motto for Freemasonry is Ordo Ab Chaos, which means order out of chaos. George W. Bush said, um, it'll take time, and this is, this is in vid on video, it'll take time to restore chaos and order, or order out of chaos. He said this in 2001, and I believe that this was after 9-11, <clears throat> okay? So and this and is, and this and is uh, people... out of the mouth of, of a famous president. Yeah, and I want to remind people out there, George Bush was a self-proclaimed Christian. Mm, good point. Right. Okay. Oh, good I'm point. a Republican, That's so right. I'm a, that makes me exactly. Christian. Wait a minute. Because you're a Republican, that makes you a Christian? Man, no way. That, that's like me being a gospel singer. and that, Being a gospel singer makes me a Christian. No, no it don't. No way. It doesn't make me a Christian. That's right. Do I want to praise the Lord? Yeah, I do. Okay? But does it make me, does it validate my faith? To God, right. No. no. People? I'm telling you, just because you're a pastor yes. sometimes, it doesn't make you a Christian. So he was a self-proclaimed Right, Christian. believer. He said, I'm and then he is um, oh, talking yeah. about order out of chaos. And what, it was part of skull and bones. Let me share with you. Let me share with you. Societies. There's a word called gullibility. Yeah. That yeah. is created. Yes. It's, we are gullible. Yes. My father told me this yeah. once when I was young. I, I he said, yeah, son. We, we, we oh, no, no, no. We I've been there. But trust me, my father looked at me one time, and I won't, I won't mention the subject, but he said, don't be gullible. Don't be green. Don't don't be deceived. That's what Jesus would say. Don't be deceived. He said, do not be deceived by any... The Bible says, do not be deceived on, by any means. Come do on. not be deceived. Right. All right, and I want to um, quote this from John Daniel, author of Scarlet and the Beast. Mm. Uh, and this is about masonry. Uh, the Masonic Supreme Council would create <clears throat> chaos, and while the pop populace was focused on the crisis, this is the reason for order out of chaos, okay? Um, while the populace was focused on the crisis, Masonry in America would rebuild its ranks. Masonry would take over. Yeah. After the crisis, Masonry would bring Masonic order out of the chaos. After the war, the Masonic plan for order, meaning Masonic control of government, business, banking, schools, churches, would take a century. And that is a quote from Scarlet and the Beast. John, author John Daniel, just to get you guys understanding what George uh, W. Bush was talking about, this order out of chaos. And you know, honey, you know, again, we, we want to preach and teach out of our experiences. So when we travel, you know, I never noticed this. That all the years that, that we've been in ministry, even when we flew all over the world, and I'm sure there's been many a times when I've seen, like, I've been noticing every time we get on a plane, there's all this Freemasonry outfits they have, all the, their, their uh, affiliations, if you will, with different organizations that are not Christian faith. And see, I'm the kind of guy, I promise you, I will speak right to your face. I ain't afraid of you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to ask you questions. I was in a baggage claim. I walk up to this guy with all this foolishness on. And I said, hey, what, you know, what organization are you with? He goes, well, I'm with a fraternity. And, and, you know, and I said, really? Really? Well, it, it, it's funny because... I said, I said, I said, I said, well, is it Christian based? He said, oh, no, we're not Christian. I go, oh, okay, you're a Freemason, right? He says, yeah, we're, we're in the Mason, we're, we're a fraternity. And I said, well, what do you do? What do you do in traveling? It's funny because you didn't know me from Adam. And here he is with his big mouth telling me his whole story. And he goes, well, what we do is we go to the colleges and we recruit the young people. See, what happens is, you know, Christians send their children off to college. They train them and they equip them in the, in the word of the Lord. They, then they send them off to the secular colleges in these schools. It could be Christian ones too. Right. Doesn't matter. Yeah, we don't okay? want yeah. And what these guys do is they come in and they recruit your children into their fraternities, into their, right. into their dark secrets, and, and they offer them certain things. That, that, is, that is Freemasonry 101. There it is. Yes. And they'll give your children the third degree. And then it, <laughs> and then it starts from there and it goes up. I promise you, you've got to be awake, Christians. Yes. Open your eyes. Because he 
you end up making oaths and pledges right. to other gods That's right. without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. It's all a trick because you want to belong, because you want to belong to a group, because you want, uh, uh, you know, whatever, uh, academic opportunities, business opportunities. It could be for any reason, just want Honey, to have friends. You and, know? I'll, and I'll say this. I remember we were in Atlanta and we heard of this radio station endorsing fraternities on right. the air. That's right. A Christian yeah. gospel station. Yeah. Yeah. And what it showed me, because mm -hmm. I started paying attention to different artists. See, I'm going to say this once. Just because they sing gospel doesn't make you a Christian. It's beyond... It's, it's, there's a much greater... Or preach the gospel, but for that matter. There's a greater responsibility to being a Christian than mm -hmm. singing a couple of worship songs and leading you into a place that you don't need to be led into. Mm. Please discern every spirit. Okay. Check every spirit. Okay. Am I supposed to go to this gospel? Spirits, yeah. like, oh, it's like, oh, I go to this gospel concert. Yeah, and you'll go to the gospel concert, you'll pick up adultery pornography, and, and all kinds of other crazy stuff. I'm just being real. Mm -hmm. You know, we can either, we can hide the stuff, or we can say, yeah. this stuff is out there. We're just letting yeah. you know yeah. that this is real, and if you don't believe me, watch the results if you go to these places. Because, again, you'll know them by their fruits. That's right. What, are they, what fruits are they bearing in their life? All right. Uh, I just want to move on and make one more uh, quote about this order out of chaos. <laughs> secret, again, secret societies have a great motto, uh, uh, ordo ab chaos, meaning order out of chaos. And he says here, agendas are form formulated, designed to give the powerful more power. Chaos is created and media blitz. Then cries out, then cries go out for a solution. Laws are passed which could have never been passed mm -hmm. without the chaos. Mm -hmm. The order has reigned through deception of the masses and the agenda is accomplished. And that is by James Arthur, Mushrooms and Mankind. Um, so I want to back this up always with the word of God, um, this divide and conquer tactic. Uh, Matthew 12, 25 and 26. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Mm -hmm. And every city or house divided against itself right. will not stand. That's right. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. Mm -hmm. How then will his kingdom stand? Galatians 5.15, New Living Translation. But if you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. James 4, 1 through 3. Uh, what, is causing, what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have so you can scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what mm -hmm. others have, but you can't get it. So, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. Wow. wow. <laughs> this whole fight, this whole election is over power. Well, 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 honey, it's about power yeah, and this money. This is what I want to ask questions, people. What do you want from these people? Yeah, oh, wow. What? No, no, you want, no, you want That's your good. hopes, your dreams, your trust, yeah. and everything is in the government, mm -hmm. and nothing is in the Lord. Wow. In other words, not good. Yeah. I am not looking for any man to supply all my needs according to their riches and glory. I'm looking to Jesus Amen. to provide every need Amen. in our lives. And it, that's a, that, well, we always make that a, a money issue, but it's not. It's an everything issue. Good. He you. supplies every need, every emotional, every financial, every 
every which way you can think is in Christ Jesus. And if you put your hopes and trust in Christ, you'll never be disappointed. Never, Amen. never be disappointed. But when you put your hopes and dreams in Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, George Bush, Bill Clinton, then you're going to get their results. I don't know about you, but I'm not looking for their results. I'm looking for God's Amen. results. Amen. Amen. All right. This is re this is uh, scriptural reasons why. Now we went over six reasons, and this is something that you know we did a lot of research on of uh, why we won't vote. Uh, now these are going to be scriptural reasons why we are not getting involved in this whole election. I, I just want to stop real quick. In work yesterday, I was uh -huh. talking to the, all these employees. Not one of them is voting. Wow. Ready for wow. this? Wow. I said, and I'm talking about black people, white people, all kinds of people. Yeah. Because in the world, I see more different unities than I do in the church. Yeah. The world is less divided than the church is. That's the problem we have. Because remember I told you, honey, I said, I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to, I got to go here. That when you go to McDonald's, that Big Mac that you have, that Big Mac in Tennessee is the same Big Mac they're selling in Boston. You can go to L.A. You, you, we've been on the plane. Oh, look. Oh, it's McDonald's. We're in England. It's the same thing. Hold on. Well, what I'm saying. <laughs> and you, you don't don't care do that, about, by the way. <laughs> but what I'm saying to you, but what, it's, it's a consistent thing. Here in America... We just can't go to every other church and hear the same thing. We're going to hear things that we're not supposed to be hearing, or we should hear, or we don't hear, because there's no unity. There's no, see, Satan has completely divided us. He has broken us apart, and that's why we can't have consistency. That's why it's dangerous to go to some churches. It's dangerous. You might go there and it may be completely against everything the Word of God is saying. What I'm saying to you is there's a consistency that happens in other businesses in different facets of life. But, but get back to what happened yes, at work. what was the reason? The reason was they said, it doesn't matter. They said, I said, what do you mean it doesn't matter? I said, your voice matters. They go, no, it don't. These are young people. Mm -hmm. They go, I go, well, what do you mean? They said, well, because... This is, we're, we live in Tennessee, it's a red state. They say, so if we, we don't, if we vote or vote, don't vote, it doesn't matter. In other words, they're going to vote Republican, no matter, and these are people that are gay and transgenders, and, and they, they don't agree with the red, but it doesn't matter to them. Wow, wow. See, it doesn't, wow. they're not even going to wow. vote. Wow. wow. And I said, well, wait a minute, yeah. doesn't it count in the general population? You know what they said? No, because it only matters where you live. So if you happen to live in New York City, where it's Democratic, then if you're a Republican, you can't, why vote? You're going to lose anyway. Wow, wow. See, how it's, wow. even that's rigged. In other words, wow. it should be a popular, in other words, if it's a real honest, true vote, would be to mm -hmm. take everybody's vote together to, to elect the president. But it doesn't work that way because in each state, there are different different yeah. uh, parties that's, that's, have won that's those a states. Well thought out decision. Oh, it's really I good. Mean, oh, wow. no, they got their act yeah, together. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, we even heard this week that we were sinning against the Lord for not voting. <laughs> really? Where's the sin? And it's like we're in the Bible. Show, right? Show us in the Word of God. No, no. God. Well, this person show said it was a commandment. Yeah. Thou shall, and, and you, you know, shall and you vote. Know, and you know what occurs, Thou occurs the Lord. to me is that we're not saying, oh, if you go out and vote, that's a sin, okay? We're not going to do that because that's that's clearly not a, a, a command, you know? But, however, I do need to say this, that if you are so caught up in this... Your civic duty. If you are so caught up with this that this is the only thing you can talk about and think about and and this is take consuming all of your time then 
that could be idolatry in your heart. Mm. You know, where you're lifting this above everything, even, you know, above, you know what I'm saying, or to the same stature as God, or maybe above. That is idolatry. Well, look what that we do in America. would be sin. Well, we lift up Mary you know? above Jesus. I mean, that's idolatry. Yes, exactly. Anything that goes above yes. Christ Anything is that idolatry. Anything goes equal to or above, above Christ God. is idolatry. Period. You make it that important. Right. So, so I just want to and, say that. And, and you know what? People do it even in their relationships. Yeah. I'm supposed to love the Lord more than I love my wife. That's right, amen. Period. Mm -hmm. Because how yes. can I possibly love her if I don't love Jesus? Because... See, the Bible says God is love. And if I love God, then I have the ability to love her the way God would want me to love her. Amen. Otherwise, I'm loving her in my flesh and in my thoughts and in my ways, which are not always good. Good. That's good. Exactly right. How can you really love anybody mm -hmm. without knowing God? God is yeah, how could you? love. Well, that's, well, yeah. hold on. What's the, the commandment? Jesus said, he said, love me with all your heart, mind, and soul. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right, right. You can't put it in order. Your, yes, exactly. You can't love your neighbor and right. yourself without first loving, loving God. God. Yeah, amen. And, and knowing that He loves you. Exactly. So, uh, okay. So, I just want to go over these real quickly. Um, these are scriptural reasons why we will not vote. Number one, we will not vote for ungodly candidates. Psalm 1, 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Guys, if we vote for ungodly candidates, we are then putting ourselves under the counsel, or purposely, or, or choosing, willfully. willfully or choosing to put ourselves under the counsel of the ungodly okay so if you can tell me differently please do you, you know because really the whole gist of the whole message mm -hmm. is it really god's going to have his way whether hillary's president or donald's president president it doesn't matter it really doesn't people because the bible is a book of prophecy and if you really want to know what's going to happen yeah. No, because oh, we'll well, we can we can prolong it. We'll get into that. You're yeah. Prolong what? You can. Yeah. No man knows the hour of the day. So how can you prolong yeah. anything? Amen. You can't prolong nothing. Psalm forty and verse four: Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, yep. who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. Guys, do not. Go after lies. Do not. These God, people are making promises mm. to you that they have no intention of keeping. keeping. Right. All right? It so sounds do not good. go after. Yes, just because something sounds good to you. Okay? You know what, honey? I'll, tell, I'll take it to the, law, yeah. to, to the lawyers. When you go to court, if you don't have the proof, you lose the case. Pretty much. Nine, nine out of ten times, if you don't have the proof, you lose. Okay? These people don't have the proof. In other words, what's the evidence of these people going to accomplish what they said they were going to accomplish? Like Donald said about Hillary. said, what have you done in 30 years? Nothing. And what's he going to do in 30 years? Nothing. <laughs> I mean, Because it's really about them personally. Unfortunately, yeah. it's That's about right. their wealth. It's That's about right. them being the, the king, power. Yeah. the power. The That's right. wait a minute, where's the humility in any of yeah, this? Exactly. And There's no says, humility. Do not turn to the proud. Don't look up to these people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two, we will not trust in man. Come on. Jeremiah seventeen um, seven verse. 7 and verse 5. I'm going to read verse 7 first. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Now, if you go uh, uh, if you go back to verse 5, it says, Thus says the Lord, thus, thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man mm -hmm. and who makes flesh 
his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. Just what you mentioned. Just trusting in mm -hmm. flesh. Mm -hmm. Guys, that brings a curse upon you when you trust in man. And you make your flesh or their flesh your strength. Okay? It's not going to work. Uh, John 2, 24 and 25. This is the Living Bible Version. But Jesus didn't trust them. For he knew mankind to the core. No one needed to tell him how changeable human nature is. Wow. Wow. Jesus didn't trust them. I know that's hard to to uh, uh, conceive that Jesus well, doesn't. To be fair, he was God. Trust us, but he knows us. Yeah, that's why he doesn't trust us. He created us, okay? Yeah. So he understood. But you know, you, people can say it's confusing. He to knows people. we go, well, say how? one thing and then we do another. We we'll say, well, why did he create us that way? Well, because he's God, and there's a responsibility to each and every one of us to decide what we're going to choose. And you know what? You want to vote? Don't vote. My goodness, don't vote your salvation away, your soul away, because you're not the skin. This, this is not me. You know, the soul is who I am. And that's what you gotta, you got to concern yourself with, not who's going to win the presidency. It's like we get just go caught up in these foolish games that, that happen where we, we can be, be more productive in life yeah. by helping people. And I pray that this helps somebody today. Open their eyes, open your ears, open your eyes, and open your heart to the truth so that you can, so that you won't be deceived yes. by this Amen. system. Yes, no, that brings me to number three. Hear me, guys, really hear me. Herod and Pilate became friends. Mm. Because of Jesus. Luke wow. 23, 12, New Living Translation. Herod and Pilate, who had been enemies before, became friends that day. What day was that? The day Jesus was crucified. That's right. They joined forces. Okay? They joined forces because of Jesus. All right? Where does that leave us? Where does that leave us? As followers of Jesus. Christ, okay? So Herod and Pilate became friends. Another uh, scripture that proves that is Acts 4, 27. And this is actually uh, in the NIV. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in the city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. Yeah. Okay, Herod, Pilate, Gentiles, people of Israel, okay, the leaders, all right, conspired against Jesus, all right? So guys, think about where that leaves us. That's why our fight is not, not against, against flesh, flesh and blood, blood, but against principalities and powers, okay? But we have power. We do have power. All right, number four. We will not be bribed. We will not be bribed. Exodus 23, 7 through 9, New Living Translation says, Take no bribes, for a bribe makes you ignore something you see clearly. A bribe makes even a righteous person twist the truth. What Don't is, be bribed. What does media do? Bribes you. Because they're not biased. They're, they're, they're. Well, what do people do in elections? They make all these promises so that you can vote mm -hmm. for them. That is bribery. Right. Um, in Ecclesiastes 7.7, 7, it says extortion turns wise people into fools and bribes corrupt the heart. Mm -hmm. Bribery corrupts your heart. Correct. That's what Ecclesiastes says. Okay? Number five, a soldier does not involve himself in worldly affairs. And I mentioned this last week, and I love this scripture so much. 2 Timothy 2 4, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Um, and, and other versions say civilian pursuits, 
worldly affairs, civilian life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And that's exactly how I feel. I feel like I'm fighting spiritually. And you know what? Because of that, I'm empowered. I feel like I'm doing what I need to do. And I feel like um, what God's will is, is, is being accomplished. Well, there's three things. You can, be, you can be spiritual, you can be cultural, or you can be worldly. Okay? Being spiritual minded is going to give you so much more of an advantage because you're going to be able to see. That's what's happening with me and my wife. We're experiencing things. We're seeing things clear. Yeah. See, when you step into the spiritual, you start seeing things that you never saw before. Okay, even the bad things. Okay, there's bad things and good things. And so that's why we encourage you to not be cultural or worldly, Amen. but be spiritual. Amen. Amen. To keep our mind on things above. Amen. Um, number six. Number six reason. This is the last reason that we will not be voting. The future has already been predicted. Already been told. Or prophesied. There it is. People are, are saying, oh, well, I'm going to go out there and vote because we want to, you know, we, if we can just prolong the persecution. You're not going to prolong nothing. You have no power to prolong anything. I, right. I don't care who you know. I don't care how much money you Bring have. Bring it on. Uh, Bring can. it on. <laughs> mm -mm. I mean. You, you don't have that kind of long? ability. You don't have that ability. You don't. It's a, it's a great thought. <laughs> What's going on? Are we getting action back here? All right. Oh, they're, they're trying to put out the fire here in the house. Yeah. Luke okay. 17, 28. Likewise, it was also in the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed mm. or when Jesus comes back. Guys, it's going to be as in the days of Lot, the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? That's just what it's gonna be, and that's what it is becoming, and that's what it's gonna be, okay? This has already been prophesied by Jesus. Uh, Matthew 24, 37, but as the days of Noah were, so also will be, this, will be the coming of the Son of Man be. So if you go back to the stories of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the story of Lot, and also the story of Noah, you will see what things are going to be like when Jesus returns, okay? So guys, this is not, um, not for you to be fearful, not for you to be discouraged. Guys, this is for you to know what's going to happen before it happens. See, there are no surprises. If we're the people of God, the Holy Spirit um, guides us into to all truth and tells us of things to come. Okay, so we won't be surprised. We will be prepared. We will be prepared. And guys, this is not something to be fearful of. And I'm going to tell you why. It's in Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Okay? So even as all these things are happening, all this craziness is happening, okay? The gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached in all the world, okay? As a witness to all the nations. And that's what we need to become a part of, all right? No man can be born again, okay? And, or in order to be born again, you can, see, you can then see the kingdom of God. And that's what Jesus wants, all right? It was more important for, for him, um, for Nicodemus, to see the kingdom of God than it was to see signs and wonders, even though we will see signs and wonders. But it is more important to Jesus that we see the kingdom of God. But we're, we can't do that if we're so focused on this world. We can't not do that. And so I want to read real quickly um, an article that I found that I love so much. And it's by a, uh, a major in the Army. And he says, I fight for your right to vote 
but I won't do it myself. And this was in the New York Times article, at New York Times on October 19th. And he says here, and I love this, and this goes back to the scripture, um, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Because that's how I feel. I feel like a soldier in, in a war, okay? And there's, you know, there's war, but there's peace time as well. And God is always going to give you rest, you know? Uh, before you have to start fighting spiritually again. But I love this article, and it says, he says here, Tonight, like millions of Americans, mm -hmm. I will be glued to my television, watching the third and last presidential debate. But unlike them and millions of others, whatever I hear tonight, I won't be taking it with me into the ballot booth. I am a major, major in the United States Army, and I believe it is my professional duty and that of my fellow officers in all branches not to vote. To be clear, I strongly, strongly believe that officers, like all citizens, should have the right to vote. But because military officers have a special responsibility to prevent politics from dividing our troops and separating us from society, it is all the more important for us to choose not to exercise that right. The military's guidelines on, on, on voting are fuzzy. Officers were, in, were instructed are encouraged to carry out the obligations of citizenship, yet we are also strongly cautioned not to engage in partisan political activity. This ambiguity recognizes that we have two identities. I am a citizen, but I've also sworn an oath as a commissioned military officer. One came by birth and coincidence, the other by belief and commitment. Mm. In certain circumstances, my identity as a military officer should take precedence. Voting is one of them. I am in the pay of the United States government. Uh, General George S. Patton once put it, if I vote against the administration, I am voting against my commander in chief. If I vote for the administration in office, I am being bought. Unfortunately, in an unacceptable number of military officers who vote in this election will publicly express their political preferences and pressure others to follow. One 2010 study found that over a quarter of uh, or over a quarter of military officers reported that another officer tried to influence their vote. Mm. My experience suggests this figure would be even higher today. Like everyone else, officers are inundated and politicized by 24-hour news and social media. Political abstention is the simple solution. With no vote, there is no need to convey partisan ideas. There's no quicker way to extinguish inflammatory political small talk than saying, I'm a military officer, I don't vote. By not voting, I am walking in the boot prints of our greatest officers, George C. Marshall, Dwight D. Eisenhower, and Patton, to name a few who didn't vote while in uniform, and those of the modern era that tread the same path. Uh, David H. Uh, Petraeus, Martin Dempsey, and by all appearances, Mark A. Miley, the current Army Chief of Staff. Lieutenant General Ulysses S. Grant, is an especially instructive case because he faced the grimmest temptation to tamper with the election of 1864 during the Civil War. And yet, crucially, Grant chose not to vote. These giants lived in different times, but they all agreed military officers shouldn't vote in national elections. As a professional, we do well to follow their lead. Mm -hmm. I know I will. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? That's awesome. Isn't that? that is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. All right. You know what, guys? We, have, we just have a few more minutes, and I want to get through this because I definitely want to be done with this message. Um, here, here's, here's the bottom line. We think we are voting for a better world. But guys, Satan is the god of this world and rules this present evil age. Now, he won't always, but currently, right now, he rules this present evil age. We think we are voting to change laws, but when is the last time a law passed, changed someone's heart? 
or, see, save, that's, or, that's, or, or save somebody. Yeah, when, or when has it saved somebody's delivered soul, somebody. delivered somebody, or truly changed somebody's heart? I mean, think about it, guys. We think we are voting for freedom, but lies has never lies have never made anyone free. Only truth can do that. I'm going to say this one more time. If you're looking to be set free, it's not going to come through man. That's right. It's not. Amen. In other words, if you are a Christian and you live in the past of of a bondage of that disgusting, hateful experience of slavery, you will never be free until you have the freedom through Christ and knowing him completely. See, because it doesn't matter. See, once you know the truth and God says you are free, you don't have to worry about what man thinks, does, says. The world's going to be biased. The world's going to be prejudiced. It's always going to be that way. Yeah. They're always going to be that way because that's how hateful this world is. That's why it's so imperative oh yeah. to have the kingdom mindset, not this world mindset. If you have a world mindset, you're going to be destroyed. That's why. Right. That's why. Right. You know, and lastly, we think we are voting for change. But the only thing right. that you can really change is yourself. And you don't have enough change to change it. <laughs> While there's no guarantee your mm -hmm. vote will change things, mm -hmm. there are things that will guarantee change, and I want to let you know what those are. Things that will absolutely guarantee a change, mm -hmm. okay? So here are the things that will accomplish the most in God's eyes, okay? So let's not forget these things that are the most powerful agents for change. Number one, prayer. Hmm. James 5.16 says, confess your sins to, one, to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful yeah. results. Uh -huh. Guys, you want change? Pray. That's what has great power and produces incredible results. Prayer. But no, we want a moment of silence. Yeah. That's, How is a that's moment of silence going to change anything? <laughs> All it's going to do is give you the worldly perception uh, perspective yeah. of the of what Satan wants you to yeah. do. 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help mm. them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority yeah. so that we can live peaceful, quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. Okay, and that's what we're going to Pray we're fervent. Gonna do, we are going to pray. Paul says pray fervently. Yes. Press in. All right. Number two thing that is going to absolutely guarantee a change, okay, for yourself and the people around you and in this nation. Praise. Psalm 139, 6 through 9. With the name of God and praise in their mouths, with a two-edged sword in their hands, let them take revenge on all nations who deny God. Let them punish the peoples. Kings and nobles will be locked up, and their freedom will be bound in iron shackles. This judgment against them, decreed by a holy God, will be carried out. So guys, you know, people might laugh at us. You know, we sing our little praise songs. But guess what? what's happening when we praise God and we, we, uh, we praise God with a voice, with song, Canaan. whatever? God is carrying out judgment, right. okay? Right. Judgment against wicked. kings and nobles, and, and judgment is being carried out Hallelujah. by God Hallelujah. when we uh, um, offer our praise to the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Number three thing that is absolutely going to produce change in this nation, okay, is knowledge. Mm -hmm. Hosea 5, 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack 
of knowledge. Guys, we are in the information age. There is more information now than ever before. Don't choose entertainment over information. Don't choose entertainment. And if you want to know how to get this knowledge, all right? Proverbs 1, 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning oh, of gosh. knowledge. It begins, so knowledge, true knowledge, mm -hmm. begins with the fear of the Lord. And let, no, I hate to keep going back here, but the world wants to keep you in slavery, slavery and bondage. And I'll tell you why. Look at the school system. Teach your children about the past. Teach them. You know, hey, you should read your history books and find out what, we know what happened in the past, okay? But what are you going to do about the future? In other words, instead yes. of opening God's word and reading the book of prophecy, you take the book of the world and they continue to keep you in bondage and enslaved in their thinking with their with their uh, public books and their right, public right. school system. Right. Don't let the enemy continue to remind you of your past. It's a lie. That's right. You cannot move forward. And Get ye behind me, Satan. Put it behind you. You know what? I can't, People do me wrong all the time. You know what I got to do? I got to forget about it. I, I got to bless those that curse me. Pray for those who despitefully use me. Use me. And that's God's way of escape for you. Not that's to right. be caught up. Yeah. I'm telling you. That makes you free. It, you know what? You free. Is that easy? Yes. You know what? Is it easy? No, it's not. But you have to get beyond the moment and go and get into the and to, get into, get into the, what God has for you. Amen. Change. Now, yes. Number four thing that is going to produce change and is going to heal this nation. Number four: humble yourselves. 2 Chronicles 7.14 If my wow. people who are called by my wow. name will humble wow. themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear heal from them. heaven heal and will them. forgive their sin <clears throat> and heal their land. What speech have you heard over the past six months that showed any signs of humility from either side? Where is the huma where's the humble people? Yes. And I'm not talking about false humility that one possesses and the foolishness that the other one possesses. No. I'm talking about the humility right. of God on them. Yeah, has anybody humbled themselves? No. And you know what this says? This says if my people, God is saying my people. So it's up to he's talking to the people right. of God to humble themselves. He's not even speaking of the word. Right. He's talking to the people of God. God, the ones that belong to Him. If my people, talking about the people of God, who are called by my man, those of you who are called, you know you're called to this. You know you've been chosen by God. If you will humble yourself and you will pray and seek God's face, if you will turn from your wicked ways, then God will hear from heaven, will forgive your sin, and will heal this land. Guys, it is up to us as believers. This is on us. Mm. This is not on Hillary. This is not on Trump. No. This is not on the government. On the this is not on the Supreme Court. Real believers. This is on believers. This is on us. This is up to us, guys. So if we want this nation to be healed, we want this land to be healed, the men's of hearts to come to the to to uh, the true and living God. We need to do these things, all right? So I, I heard about this thing really quickly, and it's um, called the National Week of Repentance or something like that. And I was like, wow, that is, that's it. That's awesome. Because repentance is change. And I made mm. this definition of repentance, and, we're, and I just want to say this, and we're going to pray with you guys. Um, what will bring about change is repentance because wow. repentance is change wow. now this is this is my definition yeah. according to the god's word this is my definition of repentance repentance is turning your back on sin and turning your back on this world 
to follow Jesus. This is what Jesus said, that in order to follow him, we must deny ourselves, take up his cross, and, and, and take up our cross and follow him, okay? Repentance is giving up any practice that offends God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good word, Veronica. Good word. I pray that, you know, somebody today, that today that you have ears to hear the truth. You know what? We're not coming up here to lie to you or to persuade you other than to persuade you into a relationship with yes. the one who can yes. change everything. The only one that can change your heart is Christ Jesus. If you, if you, if Amen. You. Amen. And if our hearts are changed, <clears throat> this whole situation is going to change. Hallelujah. You know, this, this whole, our land will be, as, as we are healed as people, this land will be healed. So, praise You know God. why America is great? <laughs> America is good. <laughs> because God is good. <laughs> there you go. See? Because God is good. That's exactly so we're gonna the case. hold on to his unchanging hand. Pray, Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Um, Father God, we just thank you. Can, can you pray? Can you pray? You're more powerful. Hallelujah. Prayer, no, prayer, no, no, no. no. We are baby. together powerful because we are unified as one. And I thank you, Lord, for my wife. Yes. I thank you, Lord, Jesus. for her diligence, Father God. I ask you to bless her. And Father, give her every desire of her heart, Father God. In this, you know, and I pray, you know, this, a, this her book is coming out very soon in November. You, you can actually read her story. And her story, which is her testimony, will change your life because it's all based in the Word of God. And if you know what? Somebody says, well, how can you say, you know, if somebody has fruit? Well, the fruit of the word of the Lord that comes out of her mouth is there's the evidence. The fruit of the word of the Lord, in other words, the scriptures that come out of this woman's mouth, is the evidence of who she is. And not because she's just quoting anything she wants. No, she's doing her study and doing her research. <clears throat> so I pray, God, that you increase her on every side so that she can help save somebody from going in the wrong direction. I pray right now that if you're out there today and you're on the fence, that you're gonna get off the fence and you're gonna get on the straight and narrow. Cause see, broad is the way of destruction, but narrow is the way of life. So if that's you and you wanna get right with God, today is your day. Yes, amen. It's, but that's what it's all about. You make a decision. A decision is that choice to choose life or choose, choose death. You can't be on the fence. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You, that's why when, G, when Veronica just was talking about repentance, Jesus said, repent or likewise perish. What did Jesus mean? I mean, that was kind of harsh, but he's saying repent. Repent of your sin. And there's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. He didn't come to, to embarrass you or shame you. But you know what? If you continue to hide yourself and hide your sin, God, the Bible says what's in darkness will come to light. So don't let your sin find you out before you repent of your sin. Amen. Amen. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus yes, that if you're out there, yeah. that God's mercy and grace and kindness and love just bathes all, bathes all over your body. That Father God, that you touch them right where they are, heal them, deliver them, set them free of their past, of their culture, yes, of who yes, they God. think they are, yes. and put them in the mindset of who they really are, because you yes, said, God. Father God, that you are, we are God's masterpiece, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made in his image. So if you know that the God of the universe called you this, how can you be sad? How can you be disappointed? Nobody's going to give you better news than that. That's why the word is good news. Father God, I thank you for the good news. I thank you for the right report, not the wrong report. If you got a bad report from whoever it may be from in this world, God can turn it around for you. That's why we need to expect great things. We need to expect 
the Father to be, to show up on his behalf, Father God. Yes, God. I, God, I just pray for believers everywhere around the world right now. And I pray that they would know and, and, and just realize again and remember the power that they have Come on. In, in the Holy Spirit. The power that they have in prayer. The power that they have in praise. The power that they have in humbling themselves and fasting. Lord God, show them the power that they have to change this world and change this nation and change the situation around them. And most of all, change themselves. God, we are as believers, the agents of true change. So I just thank you for that, that you are letting people know again where their power lies. And they need to feel empowered, God, because of you and because of your Holy Spirit, because they have the power to change things. God, Come I on. thank you, God, that's as only a few people here at Higher Place Church that we have the power to change this nation. We have the power to heal this land. You, we have the power, God, in humbling ourselves to you and through repentance. God, guys, if you want to join yourself with, with us through repentance and through humbling yourself, just pray this prayer with me. Say, dear God, dear God I come to you, I come to you and I humble myself. I repent of my sins. I turn away from my sins. I turn my back on this world. I will deny myself, take up my cross, and follow you. I will love nothing and no one more than you. I thank you, God, that you bring truth and that Every man, that every man is a liar, is a liar. but you, you God, cannot lie. You cannot lie. So I choose, so I choose truth. truth. I choose freedom. I choose freedom. I choose God, I choose God to humble myself before you. To humble myself before you. I believe, I believe that you are God. That Jesus, you are God. That Jesus, you are God. And that you were raised from the dead. That you were raised from the dead. And I believe now. I believe right that now. That I am saved. That I am saved. And I just thank you for this, dear God. I thank you for it, Lord. That I put all my hopes. That I put all my hopes. And I put all my trust. And I put all my trust. Into you, Jesus. Into you, Jesus. And I thank you. And I thank you. For salvation. For salvation. And freedom. And freedom. In your spirit. In your spirit. And power in your Holy Spirit. And in power in your I Holy Spirit. I receive the Holy Spirit right now. I receive right the now. Holy Spirit right in now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Hallelujah. Jesus' mighty name.